Hey, good morning. Gabe Suarez here from Suarez International uh, and Suarez Tactics and Suarez Fitness. I know, right? Uh, anyway, so I want to talk. Uh, I want to talk this morning about uh, holsters. Okay. Now, um, some of you may have had the opportunity to visit the Cody Museum in Wyoming. Uh, if you haven't, you should make that uh, a point in your bucket list because. When you go there, um, you're going to see what uh, the the gunfighters of the past couple of generations, three, four generations maybe, carried. Um, and uh, these guys were not interested in shooting three gun or IDPA or or anything like that. These guys were killers. They their contest was they would hunt other men whom they disagreed with politically, financially, you know, ethically, whatever and they would hunt them and they'd kill each other, okay? And so their weapons, their equipment, their holsters, all of those things are there for you to look at um, and, uh, and to study. And it's a fascinating way to spend the day. The idea was that we were gonna go there and spend you know, a couple of hours. No, 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 no. We were there all, all day, okay? Just walking around, maybe much to the, the uh, uh, dismay of my, my companions. Who had other plans but i you know what i wanted to see all that stuff okay and so one of the things that you saw a lot of in those days were things like what i'm wearing here okay oh my god right it's a shoulder holster okay now um look here's the thing um i believe that the thing that destroyed the holster industry in america was the the advent of uh, group training where you had people of marginal skill levels that couldn't basically couldn't be trusted with, with firearms uh, and the the advent of competition with rules uh, now um, you know I talked to Cooper about this many times and uh, you know he he said that he had to establish holster rules because there were guys that you know they were they were I don't know they were gamesmen as he used to call them uh, one guy was a, a guy named Tom Campbell, who I, I studied very much because he shot a Smith & Wesson semi-auto in competition, and that's what I had to carry um, on the street. And Cooper was telling me that, you know, his idea, Cooper's idea of a holster was something in strong side, you know, and, and you stand there. And where guys were starting grabbing the pistol and everything else, so Cooper said, well, we're going to have to start with the hands up in the air and surrender position. That's where all of that stuff came from. Well, then what guys like Campbell did is he said, oh, yeah, watch this. And so he showed up with a chest holster, you know, so he basically he showed up with a pistol stuck to his chest and here's surrender position, you know, and, and Cooper was like, well, you know, that's not fair and, and everything else. So that we're, we're going to get rid of these holsters. We're going to get rid of those holsters and everything else. And so, look, just because it's not legal in the competitive world. Um, or, uh, you know, some of these Elmer Fudd instructors, um, you know, get all, um, I don't know, weepy eyed and, and nervous about it, doesn't make it any less of a valuable way to carry a weapon than anything else. For example, cross draw. When you visit the, the Cody Museum, you're going to see that there are a lot of old time killers, killers that carry cross draw. There were, there were people carrying appendix carry back then. Uh, and a lot of guys carried shoulder holsters because it was appropriate for that time and that place. Now, I'm not telling you go out and get a shoulder holster and stuff like that. But look, you know what? Uh, you come to my class, okay, other than shit that is like patently unsafe, like Serpa holsters, okay, um, you know, uh, you can carry it. You want to you wear a cross draw? Wear a cross draw. I don't care. You want to wear a shoulder holster? Wear a shoulder holster. We'll figure out a way to make it work because... Training should mimic life, not the other way around. Training is false. Training is artificial. Life is not. Life is complicated and messy, and, and it rarely falls into specific categories. Okay? So, um, you know, yeah, this, this is uh, our CZP01, and damn it, yeah, I'm carrying it in a Miami Vice rig. Actually, this one, interestingly enough, um, is an old one that I had from... You know, the, the old life for my SIG 226, and it fits perfect uh, in the CZ. So anyway, don't let other people tell you what kind of holster is proper. Don't let other people tell you that it's safe or unsafe or whatever. 
you know, go back to the way that the killers used to carry their weapons. It was perfectly safe for them. Uh, and, you know, if they walked around today, they would laugh. They would laugh at how, uh, you know, how, how fearful the gun community is. Okay? So, anyway, that's today's message. <laughs> Make America great November. We may not be here in December. <laughs> Peace out.